Welcome, my name is Thilo, and today I will talk about how we implemented the GraphQL API on top of Elasticsearch, as well as our learnings. First of all, our use case. We look at a huge collection of recipes which should be displayed on a web page. So the API should serve different needs, such as searching for recipes, displaying the recipe details with all the steps and ingredients to cook it, or creating a shopping list for the next few meals with all recipe ingredients to be ready to shop at the local supermarket. We have a bunch of recipes and they all share a common set of ingredients. All this information is usually split across different data models and sources and you need to call different APIs to gather all the infos for your page. This is where GraphQL comes into play. It serves as a single API endpoint for all your frontends and hides all complex data structure logic. The use of GraphQL prevents over or underfetching by only delivering the data fields which are needed and requested by the client. As a storage backend, we lose Elasticsearch. Its document-based design allows us to aggregate all different types of data sources and store it redundantly for fast access and full text search. This way, we can not only provide a fast search over different data sources, but also deliver all kinds of data request needs in a simple, fast and convenient way. Now let's dive into the challenges which we were facing along the way. The GraphQL schema is quite mighty and allows unlimited patterns for data retrieval. So if your API is accessed by third parties, don't just use a simple Elasticsearch to GraphQL mapping library without limitations, because it will expose critical request paths, including recursions. Expose only the structures which are needed and control for request depth. If you're set up, use load tests to uncover performance issues and bottlenecks. With that, we uncovered a previously unseen recursion. Because as we started, ingredients and recipes were kept in different Elasticsearch indices as the data structure suggested. So one single GraphQL query to retrieve a list of 10 recipes with their ingredients would end up in up to 51 separate Elasticsearch queries. We could probably cache some of the requests or combine them to minimize the round trips. But since the data doesn't change that often, we chose to denormalize and use Elasticsearch to store the data exactly how we would like to retrieve it. With that approach, we could reduce the required Elasticsearch queries to one single query per GraphQL request. For all other time-consuming requests where denormalization is not possible, we used Redis as a caching layer. This, for example, for third-party APIs, which are not under our control, but are still served by the same GraphQL API. With these improvements, we were able to provide a highly scalable API and search setup, which can serve up to 5,000 requests per minute, and each in less than 50 milliseconds, and that with just two nodes. So as a conclusion, Elasticsearch and GraphQL, together they build a world-class team. With GraphQL, you can optimize for your API client needs, but be aware of the use cases and keep the complexity low by restricting the API. So thanks a lot for having me. If you are interested in more information about how to connect GraphQL and Elasticsearch, have a look at our blog post. And if you have any further questions, don't hesitate to contact me per mail, Twitter, or directly afterwards in the chat. Thank you, see you, bye.